Last week you learned some tips for basic use of your camera, today we're going to take a step further and you'll learn about manual adjustments. First, you are going to want to switch your camera to manual mode. The first adjustment you will see is shutter speed. This is also referred to as exposure. This setting is basically the most effective at setting the brightness in your picture. If your picture is overexposed, it might look like this. If it is underexposed, it might look too dark and you might not be able to see as much detail. So basically, this is how long the camera takes the picture for. So it's how long the shutter stays open. And exposures are normally fractions of a second, so they'll be represented like this. If you get into seconds, you'll see this symbol next to the number, which means that's in seconds. To set your exposure, you can use this top wheel, and as long as you're in the default mode, it will change the shutter speed. Also, if you're in live view and your camera has a touch screen, you'll be able to use the on-screen controls to do that. The second adjustment you'll see on your screen is aperture. The number value is referred to as an f-stop. This refers to how much light your lens is letting in, so lower numbers mean more light. Uh, a standard kit lens with zoom will normally have a range, so this means if you're all the way zoomed in, you won't be able to get as wide and you won't be able to let as much light in. Although the basic idea of adjustment is how much light your lens will let in, this also can affect the depth of field. The more wide open your lens is, or the lower f-stop number you set your camera to, the shallower the depth of field will be, so your backgrounds might end up blurred. So if you start shooting at higher number apertures, you're going to have to start changing some other settings to let enough light into your camera to actually make the picture visible. So you can do this by changing your shutter speed, but if you're shooting handheld, you might not want to do that because it will end up blurring the picture maybe. And if there's objects in motion that you're shooting, you're definitely going to want to have the shortest exposure time as possible. You also could change your ISO to fix this lighting issue, but you really could end up with some grainy images if you just change the ISO. So you're going to really need to find the best balance between shutter speed and ISO if you're shooting at a closed aperture. So when you want to go change your aperture, what you're going to need to do, you're going to press this Q button right here. Now, this might not be the same on all cameras, but it basically allows you to use your arrow keys to scroll between the options. And then from there, you'll go over to Aperture, and you can use the scroll wheel on the top to change your options. And again, if you're in Live View and you have a touch screen, you can use the touch screen to make those adjustments. The final adjustment I'm going to go over today is ISO. Think of this kind of like digital enhancement of the lighting of your shot. So if you start going too high, you'll see some green in your shot and it won't look quite as nice as if you just stepped up the shutter speed. So the higher number, the more light will get into the shot. So it depends on your camera what ISO settings are the highest you can go. You just need to experiment and see what you're okay with in your pictures. Cameras with larger sensors tend to produce better images with those higher ISOs up in the 1600, 3200 range. So to adjust your ISO, you hold down this ISO button and then use that top scroll wheel again. And as with all the other adjustments, you can also do that in live view as long as you have a touch screen. If you don't have a touch screen, you can still do it in live view. Just use the button in the scroll wheel. Now that you know the basics, you can start thinking of different scenarios and you can start using these different manual modes. Well, that's all for this week. Next week, I'll give you my tips on lens selection.